Ever since I can remember, I have always wanted to do what I love for a living. And it, that's what everyone wants, right? Everyone wants that, but everyone is screaming at them to do the complete opposite of what they want, right? So go to school, do whatever, you know, you know what you're told to do when you were a kid and what your parents thought was possible, what you thought was possible at the time, you already had some preset future for yourself. And so that's kind of what I did. I started out on that path. I went to college and I partied the entire time. I learned creative skills on the side. I studied all of my interests. I was deep into fitness and nutrition and going to the gym with my buddies during high school. And I also started online businesses like as much as I possibly could. I just tried everything. And then when I got to college, I uh, started to learn to code because I heard that it was lucrative. I got sucked down that entire rabbit hole. I was listening to coding podcasts. I was deep in that coding community and I loved every second of it. And so that's what I did on the side. I built out coding projects. And as my online businesses continued to fail, I decided that it was time for me to call it quits because one, I had been in college for too long, so I dropped out. I didn't see that going anywhere for me, even though I was like a straight A student in high school. And I ended up getting a front end web developer job at in at a web design agency. And that paid 50, 55 K a year. So throughout this entire time I had been, I always had a meaningful side project that I wanted to work on from the ages of like 16 to 25. I was always working on something on the side, whether it be a coding project, or a business or learning a skill or just building something out. I did digital art for a long time. I just always had something to fill my time and something that I could apply my learnings to. And the reason I did this is because it made me happy, right? And after studying flow and psychology for a bit of time, I understand why that is now. That's because I had a vision, I had a goal, and I was able to focus uh, my consciousness, if you will, or I was able to absorb myself be absorbed by the skill that I was learning, the goal that I was pursuing, and it was intrinsically motivating because that skill had meaning to me or that project had meaning to me. It wasn't someone else telling me what project or what skill to learn. It was by my choice, by my design, me creating and living in my own reality is what caused me to continue to be obsessed with and somewhat addicted to those projects because that's how it goes. You want to be in flow for a lot of your life. That is arguably the key to life is pursuing your own goals and educating yourself to the point of consistently progressing in those goals. And this is why I believe so many people are unhappy because you could just pull up a random s statistic online about how many people set and actually stick to their own individual goals not what you have been conditioned to want to create for yourself. So right now my current projects are my new writing product, which you can find in the description. And that's kind of what this video is about, but it's also getting back in the, into the gym. I've been in the gym the entire time, but it hasn't been as fulfilling. And so me understanding this and becoming aware of this has made me set a new goal based on performance rather than uh, vanity. Now looks are important, but I want to go in and I want to progress on my lifts simply because it's just something I want to do. There's, that's it. And it makes me happy to do that. And I'm actually pumped, right? It's kind of ritualistic to uh, get into the flow, get in the car, go to the gym, and then just lift a bunch of heavy shit. So why am I telling you all of this is because there is one extremely important skill and that is figuring it out for yourself, not doing what people tell you to do and doing what you want from a conscious mind, not like a mediocre mind where it's like, oh, I can do whatever I want. You want me to jump off a bridge? Okay, I'll go do that. And it's like, that's not what you want. You don't want to jump off a bridge. What do you want? What are your desires? And what is the uh, either survival mechanism or whatever is pulling you towards those things about. Is it good or bad? Do you actually want to do it? Does it align with your values? Do you actually have values? And now what people are telling you to do is not uh, going to be conducive to what you want. And a lot of the time you may have to do it for your survival, but at the same time, you need to be pursuing a project on your own that will lead to you being, you having autonomy and you being able to pursue mastery in the thing that you want to master full time. 
right? Not for someone else. And so another reason for me telling you this is because uh, a lot of what I wanted to do with my life was deemed impossible because the closed mind of many would like to, they project their opinions and they want to say the things or they do say the things that may discourage you or may pull you down or may lead you down another path and that is not what you want for yourself and that is not what I want for you. So this entire thing means that in order to pursue mastery and autonomy to be able to do what you love full time, you need to learn a skill that will allow you to monetize those things, to monetize your interests and your passions. And so in this, I'm going to present an argument as to why writing is that skill that will help you thrive no matter like no matter whether there's a recession, whether whatever, we'll, we'll dive into it. So why writing? First, the back end of the internet is code. The internet runs on code. The front end, what you see is media, right? And so if you want to tap into the infinite leverage and possibilities of the internet and being able to connect with anyone, then you need to learn one or the other, right? Those are two very extremely broad pathways that you can go down code or media, but you have to understand that code has gotten to the point where there are no code tools. Anyone can build a website. Anyone can get on social media and really reach anyone in the world if they are smart enough and know how to network. So I'm not going to talk about code here, even though I was a web developer, but media, right? You have the, you can use code or no code tools in order to distribute your media fast and to as many people as possible. And that is what captures attention. You need attention and you need people in order to get eyes on your products or services. If you want to make money outside of a job, you need to create a product or a service. So whether that be a course, a physical product, like a bag of coffee, if you want to start a coffee brand or a service business. So freelancing, we're talking about writing here. So you could freelance with writing, you can freelance with other media based marketing based skills. And what blows my mind is that some people don't see the power in this, right? Uh, what used to take a, a team of web developers to build out a membership platform for let's say a course, or even just a community that you build, it would take an entire thing. And now there's a website that you can log on and build one in less than maybe 10 to 60 minutes, right? And do not ask me in the comments, which one to get, go research. You have Google start using all of this stuff. And the thing is, is like, how does this not fuel you with like the most insane energy of like, I can do whatever I want now that I have these tools in the modern world that are on the internet that I can just like literally tap into. But instead there's two types of people, right? There's the people that use the internet for distracting themselves. And then there's the people that use the internet to build leverage and make an income and spread a positive message and do what they enjoy. And yes, it takes time, but that's the main thing. That is the main differentiator for, between abundance and mediocrity, right? It's literally a flip of a switch of how you use the thing that's in your hand. So I talked about how I learned to code, but that's not one of my main reasons for learning to code. I wanted to freelance with that skill. And that meant that I, that, it was more so marketing than it was code. So I was building websites with website builders as opposed to just coding when I did get into freelance, right? Everyone tells you, oh, you need to learn uh, this marketable skill. You need to learn e-commerce. You need to learn SEO. You need to learn all of this other shit. And that's what I did. But there was a problem. There was a reason that I wasn't making any money from these is because I was so obsessed with building the actual business building the website, making it look good, using my design skills, whatever it may be. But then when it came to acquiring customers, that is when everything failed. And that's when I didn't really do anything, right? You don't have a business if you don't have customers. So that once I learned about writing, which is what we're talking about and marketing and sales and how they all intertwine, then things started to pick up because I understood I need to get my message in front of people and present an argument for my services and promote myself and display my value online if I want access to these opportunities. So again, why writing? And now you have to understand that media, what people see on the internet and what catches attention, the foundation of media 
is writing tweets or writing threads or writing newsletters, blogs or writing YouTube videos are from a written script, or at least they do the best from a written script because you can organize the message. Advertisements online, usually writing based. TikToks, reels, short form video. Also, it's like me reading a tweet from my phone, right? That's what I do is because the message is more impactful and I will outperform any dude with six pack abs and a poor message with my high impact writing in various mediums, whether that be something like a YouTube video or even uh, what is it like a reel or a TikTok. But even then I can just screenshot my tweet, put it on Instagram, call myself a writer because that's what I am and outperform and grow to 230,000 followers without posting uh, like a picture of my six pack or something like that, even though I could probably beat out some people, but I just like writing. It's more private, right? It's more private and I can dedicate myself to uh, a craft and a delivering a valuable message as opposed to just joining in on the, the sausage fest online. So since this is a bit different from my other videos, cause this one is more actionable, right? Some of my other ones are more abstract, which I enjoy doing, but I want to deliver some more value over the coming weeks, months. So towards the end of my videos, after I give context like that, I'm going to go over step-by-step -step either process advice or just a framework you can use to actually implement the things that I'm saying into your life and test them and practice for yourself. So these are my nine steps for starting a one person writing business. And just to, I guess, give social proof or authority because it's important to show that I know what I'm doing. I'm not a writer. I don't have an English degree. I don't, you don't need an English degree. I don't think the world wants English degrees writing online. They want good, authentic and impactful writers, which means high energy, AKA talking about the things you want to talk about and delivering it in your own unique voice, like you would be texting a friend. That's what social media is. This is digital writing as opposed to professional writing or academic writing. So I'm throwing a lot of the rules out the window with my writing just because I like to write how I speak and I like to write whether it follows the perfect fucking little writing rules or not. I like to write how I want to write and how I think it will deliver the most impact and the most value. So I'm, I'm just saying here that I average around 40 to $60,000 per month from my writing in about two hours a day of that writing. Now, of course, I am also building projects on the side, so I do work longer than that. But overall, if I were to strip away everything except for Twitter, my newsletter and uh, Twitter threads, I would retain 80 to 90% of my income simply because I don't really promote on other platforms. And all of my other platforms like YouTube or Instagram, they're all just based off of what I've already written, right, as a writer. So let's get into the steps, right? So step one is to choose a topic that you cannot shut up about, right? And so how do you find these topics? Well, one, what are your favorite books? What do you enjoy reading? What do you get sucked into? The other thing is, what is your YouTube watch history, right? What are you genuinely interested in that you love learning about and love teaching about, right? To your friends, let's say you learn something and then your friend asks, oh, what are, what's going on in your life? And you're like, oh, well, I'm learning about, uh, I'm learning how to code. And I started building this website and it's really cool. Like, have you ever heard about HTML, CSS? And the thing that sucks is that your friends don't really give a shit about that, but there's an audience online that does, and they want to hear you talk about it, no matter your experience, because that's all perspective based. It's like, oh, well, I can't get online and say that I'm making 40 to $60,000 a month writing. So what can I do? Well, you can talk about it from a different perspective, right? You can post something as simple as seven things that I learned about impactful writing, right? And then that is angled from a position that not only helps you build authority, but you don't have to fake it and like be, try to be this guy that makes a fuck ton of money. You just be the guy that is learning. Brand is what you do. So whatever you're doing right now, that's how you write, right? So if you're learning about something, then you are writing about how you are learning this specific thing and you're teaching what you are learning. So there's a few other ways 
that was like YouTube watch history and your favorite books, but your social, your favorite social media accounts that aren't meme accounts or aren't, they're value creators. They create value and they give good advice. So step number two is to brainstorm a unique perspective. Why? Because novelty catches attention. People like new things. That's why when you go out in nature and you're like, oh wow, this is so beautiful, it's novelty. Uh, or when you read a book and you read someone's unique perspective that completely makes sense to you and changes the way you think about it, that's one dopamine in your brain, that's excitement, but it's caused by a novel perspective. So how do you come up with a novel perspective? I want you to brain dump or write down based on the topic that we wrote down earlier, common problems associated with that topic. Uh, benefits from overcoming those problems and goals, common goals associated with that. What are you helping people achieve, right? That's where how-to advice comes in, where it's like, what goal are you helping them achieve and what problems are standing in the way? Your personal experience is related to that. And now after that, what you do is you write it as if you were explaining how to get to that goal to a friend, knowing what you do with all of that context, where it's like, okay, well, I'm trying to get to this goal, but the problem standing in the way is this. So how am I going to tell someone how to get there? Because a problem creates the perspective, right? Everyone has different problems, but that's what creates the perspective is pretty much what reality or what angle are you looking at this goal from and achieving this goal from that's a unique perspective. So step number three is to write 1000 plus words on the topic. So every single piece of online content, or at least good content is based around a personal or professional problem. So here's how you'll structure your writing that you can use this a thousand words for, let's say a newsletter or a blog article, or even like an Instagram caption or something like that, where you have a thousand words, it starts with a problem. So you explain the problem. It's called a lead, which comes after a headline. So you explain the problem and you paint a picture of the problem and how it's impacting people's lives. And then next, what you can do is you can either go into straight step-by-step -step advice on how to overcome that, or you can give some context relating to the benefits and why it is important to overcome that problem to persuade people further to actually take action. So it would go explain the problem, give context and the why behind why they should solve that problem and talk about the benefits of overcoming it. So that's paragraph two. And then paragraph three or section three is step-by-step -step advice on how to uh, do that. It's the same thing as this YouTube video. All right. So step four is setting up a blog or a newsletter software. So this is mainly for building authority, right? Long form content builds authority more than like a short form tweet or reel or TikTok. Those are difficult to make sales on. And what people use those for is to drive people to their email list and sell once they've built authority with the depth that they provide in their content and holding attention for longer right? So I rarely use fancy sales funnels or any of that shit anymore. I use what I call the two hour content ecosystem. So what that is, is I write a newsletter every week. I condense that into a thread. I condense the actionable part into a thread, which is actually step five of this, but I condense that into a Twitter thread and I base my tweets off of that post for the week. And then I plug my backlog newsletter on the blog to under my tweets so people can read it and not only subscribe to the newsletter there, but purchase my products and services that I plug inside of the newsletter. So you rarely see me promote on the timeline unless I am promoting like a new product like I am in this video with the two hour writer. So step number five is to repurpose the actionable step by step section into a Twitter thread that can be turned into an Instagram carousel. Uh, or something else along those lines. But that is usually how you grow on social media to start um, is through actionable step-by-step -step content to prove your authority. And people just love lists. And uh, it gets your brain juices flowing when you write a list a day. So you can do a list tweet where it's like, how to do this, step, 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 and then summarize it in one line. Boom, you're, you're a fucking tweet writer now. So step number six is learning how to actually grow on a platform, right? Because too many people think or think they're too good to actually learn strategies for social media growth when it's, it's literally the differentiator between like whether you do what you love for a living or not. 
And so set your ego aside because it's not just posting good content. If you aren't growing, one, your content probably sucks, like good content, yes, is a given, but if it's like I, you have all of these expectations where it's like, oh man, I'm this crazy philosopher and I like to write things so clever, but nobody likes it. It's a problem with them. And it's like, no, dude, you have no idea what people want and you have no idea what an impactful message consists of. So the main thing is that you have to understand one branding. So what makes a good profile, what makes a compelling profile and what makes people want to follow you. All of this is human nature and human behavior. It's psychology, it's marketing. And then what you also need to learn is how to get eyes on your profile. Cause you can have the best profile and best content out there. But if you don't know how to get eyeballs on your profile, then you're not going to grow. So how do you get eyes on your profile? One and the most effective way is people sharing your content with their audience, right? So this is a retweet. This is a story share. This is a Facebook share. This is a YouTube share. Uh, this is a like people sharing your newsletter. I don't know. But then the, so there's multiple ways to do this. One is networking with other accounts that are similar to you. If you've taken a basic social media growth course, you understand the importance of networking and you understand that engagement groups are a thing. Now I'm not a huge fan of engagement groups, but I am a fan of making friends, networking with them and actually having someone that you can grow with online, sharing strategies, sharing each other's posts. It's a group of like three to five people that are like your close online friends because your offline friends probably aren't doing this. So you need a new friend group to help grow with you. So another common way of doing this is commenting on other big accounts posts because they have a large audience. So if you post a good comment that delivers value and catches attention, this is where you can practice your writing skills, then people will click on your profile. And if your profile is good, they'll follow you. So another way is to make your newsletter so good that it just gains traction eventually and people start talking about it and sharing it with their friends. And it's the same with the YouTube video where you see a long YouTube video and someone shares it and they're like, damn, this is so good. And you start building loyal followers from the start. And then a, a less taboo way than you think of growing is by paying for shares. And I'm not talking, I'm not talking paid advertisements like Facebook ads or Instagram boosts or Twitter boosts or other things like that. It's no, you're paying, it's called influencer marketing. It's extremely important to learn in modern times. And it's really, you pay someone else to share your content, right? They share it. You get your content in front of someone's audience. If they like your content, then they follow you and you're good to go. I don't like shout outs. I like just pay someone for shares. So number seven is to turn the impactful ideas from your long form content. So your newsletters into tweets. So my favorite way of writing shorter form, like punchy content is uh, the PPP framework that I came up with and that I talk about in my new course, which is pull perspective punchline. So first you pull them in with something that catches attention. Now this can be so many different things and I would recommend you study like headlines or just how people capture attention or how people lead into the body of their post, right? Where you can use a statistic, you can use a shocking fact, you can use things like the word you, or you can exaggerate a bit where it's like the greatest skill of the 21st century is writing, right? Because people start reading and it's like the most, the greatest skill. Okay. I'm going to continue writing, reading because I want to figure out what that is. So you have to understand what catches attention and what leads people into the valuable parts of your post. So then the unique perspective or just a different way of framing it uh, is good. And then after that is a punchline. So something that ties it all together. So I'll give one example here. This is a recent tweet of mine and it says people will spend 10 hours worrying about a task that takes 10 minutes to complete. So not only there am I starting with people, which people relate with, right? It's like people, I'm people, I'm going to read this. People will spend 10 hours and then 10 and 10 are also numbers. Those catch attention, uh, with themselves. And this is also a unique perspective on like worrying about stupid things, right? So it's spending 10 hours worrying about a task that takes 10 minutes to complete. And that's the punchline in itself as well. So one sentence can have this in entirety, but let's go over a different one, right? So most people will spend eight hours on someone else's dreams, four hours hiding from their own, two hours going through the motions, 16 hours awake, 24 hours of sleep, 
It doesn't have to take 40 years in a retirement plan to realize that a participation trophy isn't fulfilling. So you can see this PPP framework spread out a bit more in like longer list style tweets because I have the first line, most people will spend, which catches attention because it's most people. And then a unique perspective on like what people do. And I use numbers to hold attention as well. And then I wrap it up at the end with, it doesn't have to take 40 years in a retirement plan to realize that a participation trophy isn't fulfilling. And so this is just one of many ways to start writing shorter form content. The best you can do is really to start reading short form content or as with learning anything, you have to imitate and then innovate where you imitate someone's tweet, right? And use it as like a soft structure for your own. And of course, do not copy it. Shouldn't have to say that, but do not copy or plagiarize people's stuff. You just use it as inspiration and take the structure of the tweet and make your own and then once you get used to it and practice and realize like, okay, this, this is working, this isn't working, then you can start to play around with it and see what works best for you. So number eight is developing a system, a writing system. So you can use other people's writing systems all the time. And I actually take pride in this because in the two hour writer, I help you create your own system. But the thing with this is that if you use someone else's system or framework, that's great. Right. And this is what I want you to do, though, because um, things like systems and absolute advice and like all of that stuff, it, it strips you of your ability to figure things out for yourself, self experiment and come to your own conclusions, which is what makes a real expert. So my best advice is to research different frameworks and systems for writing or anything. This is a, a universal principle where you research what you want to do, you find the different perspectives, you create your own, you literally write down steps of like, okay, I'm going to do this with my writing, whether it be like the problem, the context and the step by step advice, or like just when you write at your desk, am I going to try writing in 30 minute blocks or hour blocks? Or am I going to write in the morning or at night and you test and you experiment and you see what works best for yourself. And then you can eventually package up this system and tell people why it works for you. And then number nine, the last thing is branch out to other platforms. So once you have validated ideas from let's say Twitter, then you can take those validated ideas that have done well in terms of engagement and have helped you grow and take those to other platforms and just talk, start talking about them again, because you already know they're going to lead to growth, right? I grew on Instagram 10 times faster than anyone else because I already had validated ideas that I knew would do well as content on Instagram or LinkedIn or YouTube or even TikTok in some cases or anything. So let's recap on all of this and what you can do with one to two hours of writing a day. And considering that you have a product or service that you can sell, or you have an idea for one that you can build and fuel with your audience. But eventually if you want and you believe in yourself and you have an abundance mindset and you understand that the internet is infinite, then you can make a higher monthly salary than uh, like one of the world's most highest paid doctors because they have a cap. There is no room for improvement for a lot of them. So here is a recap. First, choose a topic that you cannot shut up about. Two, brainstorm a unique perspective that you have. Three, write 1000 plus words in a structured way. Four, sign up for a blog or newsletter platform and post it. Five, turn the actionable part of that newsletter itself into a Twitter thread. Five is learn how to network and grow on the platform. Six is turn your ideas from the newsletter into individual tweets. So you have like a perpetual cycle of content. Next is develop a system for your writing. And then the last one is to branch out to other platforms when you are ready and when you have validated ideas. So with all of that, my new course, the two hour writer is going out soon. It is on presale right now, depending on when you see this video. But if you want the presale discount, you can go to two hourwriter.com, check the link in my description. Uh, I go over all of my writing systems from newsletters, threads, tweets, and all of that fun stuff. And I teach you the fundamentals of writing in the digital world. Uh, I even throw in some time management and like productivity stuff in there. So 
All in all, if you want to implement what we talked about today and a lot, lot more, you want to understand the depth behind everything because this is social media, this is surface level. Like I gave you pretty nine pretty in-depth stuff, but there's so much more to it. It's literally my entire life, right? That I need to get across to you and show how I structure it and how you can do it yourself. So if you're interested in writing, being the foundation of media and breaking into this and being able to talk about whatever you want and build an audience, then check it out, link in the description, and I will see you in the next video.